In an age where video games are more popular and financially secure than ever, there would come the inevitable drawbacks, from the microtransaction bullshit to live service games, or the quantity over quality output a lot of companies seem to favor above all. But none have been as detrimental to gaming's growth from a creative standpoint in the last decade or so than the cinematic movie game. But in order to speak about this genre of game, I suppose I should define it. A cinematic movie game or a cinematic game is a type of game that is defined by its story and the ways of which it is conveyed, typically through long drawn out unskippable cutscenes, walking sections that restrict the player to just holding up on the analog stick while exposition is done, cobbled with larger than life explosive set pieces where it's nigh impossible to die because the stuff is typically scripted. Like the many many climbing sections in these games, these games are typically shooters with watered down mechanics or watered down character action games with light RPG mechanics despite said games not being RPGs in the slightest. Featuring things like skill trees and crafting mechanics, things that are only surface level in comparison to actual games of those genres. These are essentially games where the gameplay takes a back seat to the story. A sad but all too true statement, I know. Funny thing is these type of video games have been in the industry for longer than you think. Most would pinpoint is starting exactly on November 19th, 2007, with the release of Uncharted essentially birthing these styles of games, from the basic gameplay combat loop, cinematic set pieces, and long walking and climbing sections where exposition is dumped on you, all the makings of the modern cinematic game. Though I would argue that the concept of a cinematic game, or one with cinematic presence, has existed ever since the inception of point and click adventure games. From Monkey Island to Cyneria to Grim Fandango, these games were where the narrative always took center stage over the gameplay. And that's not a bad thing because in these types of games the challenge comes from paying attention to the narrative, answering the correct questions, gathering information, using the right item at the right time to further advance the story or risk failure. At times you're even on the timer. So of course games like this would have a lot of talking and cutscenes and dialogue, whatever you want to call it because they are a core aspect of how those games are played and how you have to progress. Paying attention is key. The problem with how modern games abuse this design philosophy and twist it to the point it actively works against the player is all too evident. Long monotonous walking sections where you're just waiting on something to occur or control is removed from your hand while unskippable exposition is dumped on you like The Last of Us or The New God of Wars. There's nothing entertaining or remotely interesting about this style of immersion. Real immersion in video games is sticking to the core of what a video game is. That of course is being an interactive medium, not whatever the hell this is. Not to mention these sorts of pointless climbing walking sections and overly long cutscenes just kind of kill the replay value of these games. And when you actually get to the gameplay of these types of games, you often realize they're just watered down versions of existing games in the same genre. For instance, the Uncharted series is often considered a third person shooter, but the gameplay pales in comparison to the best of the genre. No, what made that game successful in the first place is the cinematic spectacle of the game. When people talk about these modern AAA games like Tomb Raider or GOW, what's remembered are the cutscenes or some explosive set piece, not the gameplay. And when your gameplay is the least remembered aspect of your video game, that's pretty sad. Which ultimately begs the question, why even make it a game? Hell, Naughty Dog themselves must have asked that question, which is why they've actually made the game into a movie. <laughs> Both of them. I'll give the Uncharted game some credit. There are climbing sections where you actually can die, who would have thought? Giving some urgency to the player, which is a very high praise for these type of movie games. As for watered down gameplay, you have God of War Ragnarok. I talked about God of War 2018 in a previous video of mine about the fall of gaming and I explained how the combat was watered down compared to the originals, and also how an over-the-shoulder view is terrible for a character action game, and that God of War was only made this way due to the success of The Last of Us. Now with Ragnarok, not much was really improved upon gameplay-wise. The gameplay has the exact same button mashy combat, lack of weapon variety. It's cool to have the Blaze of Chaos back in this game, but it only makes the original games feel that much more cooler in comparison. Seriously, what is up with the lack of aerial combat in these games? Is it because jumping is immersion breaking? Yeah, that makes total sense. God of War, a video game set in a fictitious mythology with fictional characters and gods, it's somehow immersion breaking if you can jump. Nah, I think it's just Santa Monica Studios thought it'd be ableist to their player base if you could jump. Honestly, how Ragnarok is played only makes me appreciate the originals even more. Even for all the praise the new God of Wars get for having their cinematic flair and story, 
The original God of Wars were also very cinematic. The only difference here is those games didn't need to sacrifice its game design in a desperate attempt to appease people who clearly never appreciated the other games, or played them. Or play games at all, really. <laughs> but now all of a sudden they're their biggest fans of the cinematic presentation of the newer games and clear parallels to The Last of Us. The difference between the original God of War's cinematic prowess and the newer games is how they're integrated. See, in the original God of Wars, you do crazy shit like this. You had far more dynamic combat, where there were bosses you literally had to scale, like the Kronos boss, like in Shadow of the Colossus. Boss fights where puzzles were integrated into them to defeat them. Or the Kraken where you had to climb up its tentacle to do damage. It wasn't super complex, but there was depth to it that made each encounter feel unique. It wasn't just button mashing hack and slash crap with a camera angle designed for shooters because you can't even see behind you or on the side of you half the time. The new GOW scene wouldn't dare have this dynamic combat like the originals because you can't even jump. <laughs> A lot of this stuff in the original God of War games would have just been a cutscene if they were made today. So there's a part of Ragnarok where you're just sitting through cutscenes and then you scale a mountain, but you aren't actually scaling the mountain because you can't die. There's no urgency, you just press a button and more cutscenes. And when you play as Atreus, the game literally becomes a third person shooter, which you know, benefits the damn camera angle this game was clearly designed for. I remember when people started to hate the quick time events in the original God of Wars and quick time events in general, seeing them as arbitrary, as most games started to shoehorn them in. Like when Spider-Man 2018 was first revealed, it had quick time events in the trailer which were later omitted due to backlash. Yet the new GOWs also have quick time events, but you can't even fail some of them which kinda brings up the question of why even have them in. I personally like QTEs, as they're just another testament of gameplay needing to have quick reflexes to pull them off, while giving the game a real cinematic flair at times, which is something the OG God of War games excelled at, or really any game if they're integrated well enough. They didn't restrict the player to just sitting through another, unskippable cutscene. I mean, things have gotten so bad, there's literally a difficulty called story in this game, for people who don't actually want to play the game, but watch it, you know, like a movie. That alone should speak volumes about the game design philosophy in games like this compared to their originals. The saddest thing about these movie games isn't even the fact they exist, it's the fact these companies aren't willing to try anything else, because these games are what's popular and what's popular sales. Naughty Dog doesn't need to make any other game, they can just keep spamming The Last of Us, whether it be overdone remasters The Last of Us 3 or a fucking TV show and probably another Uncharted. Jack for sure is never coming back, though I'm kinda glad as the current staff would definitely ruin it. Catch some rays. This isn't a game. Funny thing about the Jack series too, those games were also very cinematic, all while never sacrificing their gameplay to tell a unique story. Then you got Santa Monica Studios sacrificing their DMC inspired action game for a watered down movie version that gave them more critical acclaim than ever, for obvious reasons, none pertaining to the gameplay. Then there's Sony Interactive Studios who literally disbanded Japan Studios, their first party division, the company behind the classics like Legend of Dragoon, the Ape Escape games, Ark the Lab, Parappa the Rapper, Forbidden Siren, and a hell of a lot of other important games to Sony's legacy, then moved their main base of operation from Japan to shithole California, essentially detaching from their Japanese roots after the former president stepped down. What Sony essentially did is if, hypothetically, Nintendo dismantled Rare in the 90s for literally no reason and moved to fucking San Francisco. Meaning no Donkey Kong Country, no Conquer, no Golden Eye, no Perfect Dark, nothing. And I know Rareware wasn't a first party developer, but they were so integral to the growth of Nintendo, they might as well have been. There used to be so many cinematic games, but like I said, those games never sacrificed their gameplay in favor of a cinematic flair. No, they kept a balance. From Legacy of Kain to Fallout to Medal of Honor's recreation of famous World War II battles to the original Resident Evils to Bioshock and really the entire immersive simulator genre, to Silent Hill 2. Let's just hope that Silent Hill 2 remake doesn't have long monotonous walking sections where you can't do anything for an hour. It's a crying shame what some of these companies have become, and the lack of variety in the medium that was once extremely experimental and creative. 
Like say what you will about Metal Gear Solid supposedly kickstarting this video games having long overdue cutscenes. For one, you can actually skip the cutscenes in that game, and two, those games actually have good gameplay with high replay value, something not found in a lot of modern AAA games. But I digress. Hopefully one day this industry can turn itself around. Who knows, trends in gaming, or really any medium, often come and go, either due to shifting in market, poor quality control, or just plain oversaturation, something that is clearly evident today, especially when referring to the most recognizable games of the last generation or so. Rest in peace Sony, you had a pretty good run of about 20 years.